Welcome to um, this Circle Society um, event, uh, where we're going to be taking a deep dive into HubSpot, uh, one of our tech stack series. Um, I'm Lisa Collins, I'm Managing Director of the Circle Society, and I've got um, an amazing panel with um, me today. And after we've um, had a chat, then there will be some time to ask questions at the end. Uh, so just to introduce everybody, um, James here um, is outside of our industry and at she owns a company called Bound Marketing and um, it's a UK based HubSpot solution partner and growth agency. So he's he's got a great background um, in HubSpot. Then we've got Claire from the DPP um, and she's very much on the start of her journey with HubSpot. So keen to hear more there. Um, Lizzie uh, from M2A Media. Um, she's she's been in. I think you mentioned two two, two years. You've got your third year um, invoice and has implemented HubSpot. And then Jeff from Main Concept um, is probably on the same sort of um, journey as Lizzie, uh, but is certainly implementing and using more of the features. Um, so um, keen to hear more about what everybody has to say there. Um, as I say, please type questions into the questions box and we'll answer those at the end. And we are recording today's session, which we'll make available to members on the marketing um, section of the Circle Society website. Uh, so let's make a start. Um, so it's probably sensible for me to start with you, James, first. For those sure. that don't know, what is HubSpot and what are the advantages, in your opinion, um, that, that it brings to the organisation? Great question. Um, look, essentially, it's a CRM platform um, and it really seamlessly integrates across marketing, sales and operations, uh, including kind of the success side of delivering expectations to customers. Now, from my opinion, it's really designed to connect every scaling company's needs so that they're able to deliver like a best in class customer experience. And for me, HubSpot really excels when it's used across the entire customer lifecycle. So just think everything, marketing, sales, customer success, onboarding, HubSpot really fits, or is the glue, in my opinion, to all of those things. Um, what does it bring? What's it, that's a good question about what, it, what advantages it brings. It really does depend on the organization and what they're looking for. But sort of from my perspective, it's how it provides organizations with like a single point of truth around their customer journey. Um, one of the biggest bottlenecks is what we see is this disjointness between relationships that organizations, uh, relationships within departments, sorry, that organizations uh, face with. So not really knowing how a lead is in and who's picking it up, how sales are looking after the, the managing their, their challenges through to, you know, the operational side of it. So, it's no real sort of surprise maybe to hear this, but the most common bottleneck that we see is the, is the relationship between marketing and sales. There's always an argument, oh, the lead's rubbish, the sales tells you, oh, they're not good enough leads. However, plugging kind of the hub spot into that is, is really where opportunities start to come uh, to service. And so without, I can tell you all day long how good it is and what it can do, but I know we're very limited on time, so I'll probably end on that part. That's interesting, Joe, that you talk about, you know, sales and marketing using it, because, I, you know, yeah. I, everybody here will probably feel the same way that, you know, there are some challenges with aligning sales and marketing teams. So that that's definitely um, a, a great a gold tick, in my um, opinion. So um, just moving on then. Yeah. So have, thinking about what you were doing before you implemented HubSpot, Lizzie, what, what sort of things were you doing before HubSpot and what what were your main challenges? So um, before HubSpot, we were using um, MailChimp in terms of our kind of email outreach um, for on the marketing side. Um, and then my colleagues in sales were using a um, platform called Insightly. Um, and then the client services team were using Workflow Max. So they're all separate, you know, softwares. There was no... Um, no overlap and no integration really. Um, um, and they worked, you know, perfectly well. Um, but when it came to sort of investing in, in, the, in, the, in the full sort of um, 360 platform, we decided we wanted, we wanted, to, we went for HubSpot in the end. Um, and yeah, so challenges wise, I think it was really, uh, I think um, the, the lack of integration really, I think between, between those three platforms is where we struggled slightly. 
and there was just less um there were just less features it was less sophisticated yeah what was it about hubspot that won you over um so interestingly yeah it sort of echoes what, what what james was just talking about really we we wanted um we wanted a single single platform so we did look at salesforce um when we were doing our research we did a sort of a full, full um uh yeah a bit of a bit of a project into which would suit our needs best um and at the time and i think it's still the case you know there was the salesforce and then the the, the marketing side of it was, was pardo and it just felt quite com complex and you know we're quite a lean team and we're you know everyone's always short on time aren't they but we wanted something that was quite easy to use and easy to implement so 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 we chose hubspot for those reasons really plenty of other reasons actually as well more comfortable with the ui we like the aesthetic of the templates that they were going to give us it suited our brand really i think more um dashboards reportings forecasts all of that was it was you know really much the preferable option yeah excellent after after weeks and weeks and weeks of speaking to, to sales teams at both hubspot and salesforce yeah they won the day yeah yeah, yeah they did um Jeff, no same question. <laughs> Jeff, same question to you. Uh, what were main concepts using before HubSpot? I think, well, actually, my journey is pretty similar to Lizzie's, I think. But um <clears throat> when I joined Hub uh when I joined Main Concept three years ago, we were using Exact Target, which is also, I believe, part of Salesforce, but it's more on the B2C side. Um, but we were using it pretty comprehensive marketing package, but we were mostly just using it for email marketing. So uh, we got out of that and um, while we're investigating the whole stack worked on mailchimp as well uh so so on the marketing side really we're using mailchimp we're using survey monkey we're really just disjointed and nowhere did it really connect into one place um and so one of the things i also did when i got there was create um work with google data studio except essentially create one you know series of reports that at least could tie everything together or at least put it all in one in one spot so uh, really disjointed, I would say, in the beginning. Uh, also, we uh, were on uh, uh, Salesforce as far as the CRM go, the sales side go, and our support team uses that, uses that as well. And, and in terms of moving on to HubSpot, uh, were there any other contenders? Uh, yeah, of course. We looked at, <clears throat> we looked at a few. Uh, Salesforce and Pardot were one of them, uh, since we were already on Salesforce. And um, also our parent company, has a bit of a homegrown option that we looked into as well, uh, but that really suited more of the entertainment space that main concept isn't really, really as much part of as our parent company is. Um, so what we did is at the beginning, at least, this was about almost two years ago, we really started on the marketing side. We implemented Marketing Hub and uh, CMS Hub uh, back in early 2021. And really the idea was not to go further than that. So, um, but but things just went so well on the marketing side and and CMS. I mean, um, we were able to do that ourselves. That was essentially moving everything over, creating the new website. When I say ourselves, really, um, we we did purchase a template through the HubSpot marketplace. Um, but within my 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 team was really able to do everything on our own. And this was pulling things from a pretty complex um, web tool in the past. Whereas now I can go on as we're speaking and add a page, edit a page, things like that, whereas in the past it wouldn't have been wouldn't have been so easy. And, and um, James, James, so, I, I have to confess, I'm not a HubSpot user, but everything I hear about HubSpot, it, it's it's user friendly and and people, as Jeff has said, it's it's pretty easy to use without a developer coming in. It, it, is that true? Yeah, definitely. The the, the CMS side of it, um, I think HubSpot kind of recognized that Whilst WordPress, you know, is a really good CMS platform, you've got these off-the-shelf products that do certain things like Shopify for e-commerce and these sort of web designs. But what they recognize really is that there isn't something out there that connects everything together that is user-friendly to build, not just to use for a customer that's landing on it, um, but also recognize that every customer's journey is different. You know, if I land, if I opt into something that you've got on offer that's going to potentially solve a problem for me later on down that journey when I'm receiving further communications you can adapt the way HubSpot CMS treats that customer so it can hide things based on non-relevance because that's more top of funnel information rather than middle of the funnel 
trying to do that with WordPress or others is a challenge and will need more expertise like a, a developer. So it's quite reassuring to hear you just you can literally just go on, buy a template uh, and adapt it. And if you don't know what you're doing, HubSpot have also created a very unique academy training, which, um, you know, you get lost in, to be honest, it's quite vast, uh, but it's very useful. So, yeah, it's it is easy to use, but of course, I'm going to say that. Of course, I didn't you breathe it. of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah. um, Claire, moving on to you, um, you said earlier um, before we came live um, that um, you're going to go live with HubSpot in the new year and you can't wait to go. What have you been using um, before? Um, well, what, what are you using now, I guess, is probably the question. And why HubSpot? Sure. So we're currently using MailChimp and Hootsuite and Salesforce. Um, moving to HubSpot, just because I'm familiar with the platform. I've had, I've led to teams through COVID using HubSpot. I know that it can do the job. And I think for me, moving to a growing company, it's really important that I can upskill my team um, quickly. Using the Academy, I'm going to just touch on loads of points everyone's made because they're all feeling the same way about it um but just having access to the academy and allowing my team to upskill themselves um it's really rich in information and training points um and the marketing library as well so you don't have to you know start from scratch and rewrite what's already been done you can use optimized templates um so i think with hubspot it just allows us to really innovate the way we're marketing without having a massive business impact you know we can get on with our day and just and learn as we go but efficiently so yeah excellent um, obviously we're all well you're all on different journeys with HubSpot um, and Claire coming to you first you're at early stages with the implementation how yeah. is the implementation going and how are you planning to use it you know onboarding the team and all of those sorts of things Sure. Um, it's it's going really well. I think obviously being a membership organization, there's some nuances with our business, you know, how we allow people to access our content, which we've really had to work through with um, our agency, our partner agency. Um, I mean, I think with any kind of when you're onboarding any MarTech, there's scope creep. You know, there's things that kind of pop up and you're like, oh, didn't think about that. Um, so I would say that whatever um, a deadline you're putting on to launch, I would add maybe a couple of weeks um, onto that, just because things do crop up being completely realistic. Um, so what was the final question? Um, how are you planning on using it in terms oh, of- Oh, how are planning using it? Yeah, yeah. And, then the t and then the team onboarding the team. Sure. So we we took on two partners, um, one to help us with the implementation, doing the techie side of stuff, and one to help with um, onboarding the team. So we've gone through our whole training cycle. Um, and then from that point, because I'm a HubSpot user, I will we're going to undertake like weekly HubSpot training sessions and just refresh ourselves using the academy and stuff. Um, and it's just it's going to become our, our main marketing platform. We're getting letting go of everything else and it's going to become our main source of truth um marketing and yeah just gives us a lot more flexibility and gives us it buys us back more time to do other stuff you know the automate automation is worth its weight in gold <laughs> excellent um james just coming back to you for a minute for anybody that's looking at implementing hubspot you know what factors do they need to consider and how long should somebody um set aside for the implementation before they can really get up and going it's a, it's a good question i think hubspot is a beast um to be clear and i don't mean it negatively it does so much i think a lot of the things that um we tend to find is is usually the lack of strategy and and what they actually want to use hubspot for so just be very clear as to where you're going and, and what are those current challenges because usually the challenges that you solve initially are the ones that tend to be the quickest to results which creates more adoption to the system as well so um but i think that the the idea really is is just be very clear on the roadmap you know as you just as you just said claire that you you kind of had an idea of the, how long it took and then there was these scope creep scenarios that's very common and i think the the big thing really is is chunk it up in a way even with like the learning program a lot of things that we do with clients is we create like a spreadsheet and we assign roles to different courses 
and then help them create a learning path with you know completion dates and the academy gives you lovely certificates that you can brag about which then encourage others to to do the same so it becomes kind of a self-perpetuating um you know success period but i think really just getting into the system you've got to allow at least six months and then to to fully adopt it to every process you know expect it to take 12 months um even though you might be able to do it before but so I, could, I couldn't implement in january and be be using it by april well use it immediately i mean that's you know as i said earlier focus on those big challenges first um and then as as you load a, a one challenge all the others sort of become to service um and as as you get to understand the system it also educates you on actually am i really delivering this journey that my customers deserve um is there a, a seamless handover between marketing and sales and then sales to onboarding offboarding all these things come out the woodwork um when when going through a process like this so that's why i say give it 12 months because you, you're forever looking at different ways to optimize and i think laboring the point about hubspot for me that's one of the big benefits is that it constantly gets you in customer success mode am i always delivering yeah and can i do this better can i help my customers to achieve what their their desires are I know it was a bit around the a bit about the bush a bit there, but I thought I'd labour that point a bit as well. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks. And and Lizzie, obviously you're past that twelve month point now. What what benefits are you seeing for the organisation? You know, how is it really working with them? So I suppose, well, actually, sort of just dialing dialing back a bit, I'd say in terms of the implementation of of HubSpot, I mean, we were up and running literally within about a month because what we were trying to do was sort of replicate what he had been doing with, you know, our, our other, our other um, software. So that, that was quite, so that was good. We were able to start, you know, producing really good campaigns and getting those out, but we're still, we're still implementing it in many ways. You know, there's still stuff that we're learning to do and we're sort of expanding you know, the ways that we're using it, we're becoming more sophisticated. So I'd say it was like an ongoing process really, but I think it was so, so easy to get to, to implement it was so quick to get set up for us perhaps our use case is more simple than than claire's but um that that was a real positive um and i think now sort of if talking to benefits i think it's really it really has uh sort of prevented those silos that we had you know where we're like now we're we're using it quite seamlessly across marketing and then sales and also customer success we've recently onboarded the customer success team and they're using it they've integrated it um with um, something they use called Zero, so they're um, you know putting together renewals and deals and quotes through it. So that's all you know working really really well. I think there's a marketplace, so you can you know plug it in with other other apps, etc. So that's 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 been a real positive. Um, and I think because we're you know we we I think it's also helped in in building trust within the teams because we're sort of more working more closely together there's there's understanding you know of our own complexities and our pressures per department and i think that sort of really gelled gelled the team together which is which is a really you know um positive thing um and pres presumably you're using it for reporting so looking at how well campaigns are doing um yeah we are one thing we're not doing actually is we're not we're still can we've still we've linked it to our CMS, which is WordPress. We we had just sort of built a new website on WordPress at the time of doing HubSpot. So we decided not to move fully over to, to HubSpot for that. Um, and it sort of, it was work, WordPress works well for us. And we found that the sort of stats is slightly more granular in WordPress than we were getting from, from HubSpot. So that may be something that we need to revisit. Maybe we're not doing it properly, you know, maybe something for the new year. But I think that would be quite a big job to, to sort of bring our whole website into HubSpot. And we're not quite sure if we're ready for that yet. But yes, on the reporting side, it's brilliant. You know, you can set up campaigns, you can link all your, you know, activities in various different channels through to, through to HubSpot. And then you can, you know, compare how you've how each campaign's done, um, you know, with all the different data. And that's something we need to sort of work at as well, I think, as, as time goes on to make sure we're kind of um, getting the most out of it. And also as the database grows and fills and as it's got more, you know, information in it, we can then, you know, dive deeper and make sure that we're getting really meaningful learnings from it. Yeah. 
And I, I hosted a webinar last week um, where we were talking about, you know, the management team wanting more sort of information back from marketing to be able to justify the return on investments. Is HubSpot a tool that will be able to help you do that moving forward? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. It really helps. I mean, in terms of lead generation for us, you know, we we did, we, we were quite cynical in, 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 in the outset, you know, we but, but we've been but, but but then we did start to incorporate the live chat and the pop-ups and the landing pages and and actually they've captured some really really good quality data there so that's been a real boon and we've been really pleasantly surprised from that in terms of sort of volumes of lead gen i think there are other tactics that, that we use rather than sort of capturing from from the website um that perhaps bring in you know greater volumes of leads but um but then we still bring those into HubSpot and then, you know, we're able to still track the activity. So it's sort of combined, you know, we do, we, you know, have campaigns that sort of cross lots of different channels. And even if they, you know, the data comes from um, outwards, you know, like if we upload lists, we're still then, you know, putting them into HubSpot. So we track them from then on. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, Jeff, I think you're a little bit further into the journey um, in terms of the tools that you're using with HubSpot. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you, you know, where, where you are today and some of the results you're seeing. And are, are you integrated with your website? Yes, yes, so we are. We're using HubSpot for pretty much everything now. So just to complete the journey we started almost two years ago with um, marketing and CMS, we have added the other three hubs on. We just launched those the second half of this year. So we're now on sales, service, and operations hub. Um, so going back to the beginning, at least, when we, the day, let's say just the day we launched our new website and had marketing in place, essentially speaking about insights and reporting, everything essentially just became known to us um, in an instant almost versus what we had before. We can, we can track our leads. We can see which, you know, break we, we collect, well, our leads are a lot based on demo downloads, so we can break it down by a specific product where they came. It was just stuff we, we couldn't see before. So that was just amazing for, for me coming from an analytics background um, and also just the rest of the management team of the company too, just to see, oh, this is this is what we can, this is what we can get. Um, and really the intent wasn't to move beyond those, but um, we had been on Salesforce for quite a long time and it had been a good tool for us for let's say 15 years. But we're a bit of a complex business and we had to customize Salesforce so much over the years that it became really difficult for us to control that tool without a true administrator. And, um, and so that's why we started looking at the journey to move also sales and then service um, and then really operations have became a needed piece. Um, that's a newer tool that they have. Maybe James can go into more detail on it too, yeah. but um, we really had to go with Operations Hub because of that complexity we brought over. And really part of what I wanted to do uh, was really eliminate a lot of that complexity, but I realized that complexity wasn't from Salesforce. It was actually from our, our business itself. Um, so I'd say, so again, the marketing, the CMS piece was super easy for us, but um, talking about scope creep, we were hoping to be on live on Sales Hub realistically maybe by April of this year. Um, we did finally launch it uh, in the beginning of October. And uh, and so I think we're just finishing. I would have, I just said maybe last week we finished our phase one, which was really getting everything done. We've got, um, you know, we've got buy-in from all the teams, services on it, sales is on it. Most people are very happy with the tool. They're off there creating their own reports. Um, but there are things we need to do still. We're, we're, you know, we're just getting the basics now with customer journey, with uh, lead scoring, uh, with all that kind of stuff that we can really use that power of HubSpot for in our next phase of implementation there. Um, but yes, it was definitely more complex. We had to work with a couple different agencies until we could, you know, figure out who really got our business. And now I think we've settled with a pretty good one that's that's a pretty good partner with getting all the stuff in there for us. Excellent. And, and James, is it hard to find the right partner to work with in terms of your HubSpot implementation? And I know you're one of many. Um, so, you, you know, yeah. and you do, as Jeff said, need to find that one that matches your business and really gets, I guess. Yeah, it, it, it is surprisingly isn't hard necessarily to find them. It's it's like you said, really, it's matching what you need against where you're heading. Sometimes you don't have all the answers um, and some partners are better at others, other things um, where you've come from, really. 
and it could just take a, a new set of pair of eyes to kind of go oh did you think of this when you did that and hey Brenda there, there you go there's that missing that missing piece of the puzzle that you didn't realize was missing but you know I think just hit the nail on the head taking the approach that Jeff's done is is probably one of the best um because it then doesn't become such a beast at the beginning and such a steep hill to climb if you you take your time with it own one part of it as I already said you you're going to find other things that you want you want to do not necessarily what you need to do you want to do it um and operations hub is a new part of the platform and it works great with with data it works great with helping you understand all your connections with lots of different apps um there's so many things it can bring to a business that's at a stage where you know, data and and attribution models such as where leads are coming from who was the last touch point all the things stakeholders ask for you know i'm putting money into this where's it going and what what success am i getting how do i grow to the next level um is all going to become a part of it but yeah to answer your question about the partners side of things we we're into the revenue operations part that's our bread and butter now and it pretty much stems from marketing all the way through to operations it's RevOps is kind of the name they've given it this year. Um, and it does, it's really about integrating the departments. Um, you know, as Jeff is saying, it's making sure everybody knows their role and gets the best out of it for the business um, as well as for customers. Right. And following on from there um, and coming back to Jeff for a moment, um, in terms of onboarding your team and making sure everybody is using HubSpot, how did you go about the training? Was it something you were able to do or did you bring somebody external in? I know we've talked about the academy um, or is it an ongoing process? Just keen to hear your approach on that. Uh, it's a mix of really all that in the beginning it was mostly self-taught. It was really it was my teams. We're talking about a, a smaller marketing team, three, four people who really needed to come in and master the tool. So I think when you're talking about marketing and, and CMS again, that was mostly self-taught. I think back then I went and did mark one of the certifications through HubSpot. Um, they do have fantastic training. It is a bit overwhelming at times. Um, we also have had some training sessions with the um, agency partner that we've also worked with. So they did specific training for our sales team, specific training for our service team. Um, and we've got another one lined up pretty soon that's going to be specific to reporting. Um, and then we've also within the last couple of months gotten really um, close buy-in with, with part of the sales team. And so they've actually, a couple of those guys have actually taken HubSpot and really made it their own from a sales point of view. And so they've gone out there and uh, again, we've had to do a lot of customization. So they've really worked on how we're looking at forecasting and revenue, created reports and shared this out with the rest of the sales team as well. And so it's sort of grown from that point of view also. Um, but I think a really good source of what I always advocate for is for people to go in and uh, do the training itself through HubSpot. I, at one point, I have contemplated doing a bit of a contest because as a Salesforce, a Salesforce, as a HubSpot uh, admin, we can go in and track what people are doing in there as far as what they're doing for training. So maybe some kind of a contest. Well, I like, I like that. That's the best way to get a team involved, yeah. isn't it? A bit of a competition. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lizzie, has your yeah. approach been the same? So we uh, had an agency partner called, I think it was BBD Boom, BBD Boom. It was a couple of years ago now. So they helped us set up an, initially. And we did a few sessions with them specifically around kind of more complex things we wanted to do with the workflows on our market, uh, marketing campaigns, e-campaigns, et cetera. They worked, um, did some sessions with our sales team to help them build out the pipelines, et cetera. And um, we did quite a bit on reports. Um, so that has been really good. And then, yes, there's so much out there, isn't there, in terms of the library and the academy. My God, you really have to sort of keep on it. Um, and that's really, really great. The other thing is that we have our account manager at HubSpot is, has been really brilliant. And um, there's been a few things that we have wanted to, features that we've wanted that haven't been there. So, for example, with our financial year, it was slightly different to other financial years. It wasn't a calendar one. And so that was proving problematic with reporting. And then recently that's become something I think that they, you know, they listened to what our need was and now that's become something that they've been able to implement for us. So that's been a real, really massive positive. And one reason why we, we, we sort of, you know, renewed again this year. The other thing was um, with sort of as we scale, we're looking at maybe taking credit card payments via HubSpot. And there was 
an option to do that in the US, but not the UK. And I think so we're working with them on, on you know, various different features that we need and they're really rece receptive to that. Obviously, it's not always instantaneous and it's part of their product roadmap, but like there's definitely an option there to, to have that conversation with the team at HubSpot as to, you know, what we're after and what's not quite ready yet. So well, it's nice yeah, to hear that it's flexible. Yeah, really flexible. I, say that, I, I wanted to mention that too, is the, the HubSpot support itself is fantastic. Um, yeah, it? But depending on what level you are, you can get up to phone support. They'll call you back within like three minutes once you type the issue in there. I've had them, um, I've, I've typed in an issue and before they've come back, they've been in my account and set up a workflow as a sample or a report to show how it works. So very, nice. very, yeah, very fantastic nice. as well. And, and Claire, um, obviously you're going to go live in Jan January. Have you done any training yet or is that program in place for when um, when we're back in the new year? Yeah, so we've done the training. For, we've used the agency to train us as we go along. Um, I think the beauty of HubSpot is whilst I've had another agency working on the technicalities um, in the background, we've been able to have full access to the platform and start building our campaigns and automations. So as soon as you know the data is over, um, we create our list and we press go. So it's um, yeah, and then from that point we'll you know continue our training using the academy, as everyone said. Um, but I think kind of just echoing what everyone's saying, the support is that they want you to they want it to work for you as a business. It's not just a kind of right here's the platform and then you have to and then they run away. Um, you get full support. And as a small marketing team, again, that's worth its weight in gold because you know that there's always someone there to help you out if things get a bit tricky. Um, but sorry, just going back to the training. Yes, we probably will work with another partner to, to do some more high level training throughout the year just to make sure that we are optimizing our use of HubSpot. It you know, evolves all the time, as Lizzie was saying. They're always listening to customers and developing. Um, so. Yeah, I think um, come January, we'll have, we'll know enough to get going with it. But I, we haven't overcomplicated it. We've done what we've needed to do to to market our campaigns. And as you know, Lizzie and James and Jeff said, it's an evolving journey. We'll add more on. We'll do more as as we kind of progress next year. So. Excellent, excellent. And James, any final tips on the training um, and onboarding? Yeah. There is a, there is one uh, which might prove quite useful. The I don't know if you guys have used it or if anyone's heard of it, but there's there's playbooks as a feature within HubSpot, and these have been quite proven to help with new new employee onboarding. Mainly, to be honest, you can sort of use it as a process design um, and then indicate parts of the software that they use. And I think as well, just be very clear on permissions you set for certain employees because if someone's got access to everything our natural instinct is what's that let's have a look click on it oh dear i broke it and and only only kind of give them what they need as opposed to what could be given to them um and then open it up as you go i love the competition that jeff mentioned i'm a huge advocate of that and you're right you, you can go into there you can go into kind of the training and you can see all the little badges each employee or user has and uh you know, bragging rights or, or make it a full blown competition with a prize at the end. Either way, I think it's important that there's there's a bit of competitiveness. There's no harm in that. No harm at all. No harm. Um, let's let's move on. Um, obviously, implementing something like HubSpot is fundamental to the marketing department. It it you know it it's really part of the engine there. Um, James, let's ask you first, and and then I'll ask others. I don't. I, don't want to know exactly what you've spent but James how much should people budget and I'm guessing in terms of put it, allowing budget you shouldn't just think about a one-year implementation cost you should think about development as you go on through the years yeah that's a good question I think that there's two sides of it to think about there's obviously the software costs and there, there's lots of factors that will play what that would cost um, it's a 12 month commitment. So, you know, you sign up, you're in it for 12 months at minimum, which isn't actually a bad thing in my opinion. But I think from a onboarding, coaching, training, I mean, I'm sure some others can give an idea on what that costs from their side. Um, but from our instance, typically, um, you know, it, it, 
from it from an annual perspective you could be looking really um around sort of like a two to five thousand pound investment or dollars if where are you from uh, a month to get you going and i think it's also about worth taking on board the other bits that are needed as i already said and we talked a lot about this today where you're going to find things that you're going to want to improve there's going to be changes to the economy that you're going to want to sort of adapt your processes to which means that you're going to need to adapt the way you use all things marketing not just hubspot and, and can the cost go up and down depending on how many user licenses you have uh, well actually users are free it's really if you're looking to use more of like the sales hub professional scenarios so in, compar um, in comparison to another it's system, more based on contacts to be honest marketable yeah. contacts so you could put a million con you could put a million people in your database um but if they're not all marked as marketable you you don't pay for them okay um, so the crm is if you've got a really free. dirty database and you're not marketing to anyone yeah i wouldn't i would recommend that you know don't, don't go and buy a backstreet type database from someone that's stolen something <laughs> um but yeah i mean the cm the crm side of hubspot is actually free you don't pay for that it's the it's the marketing the sales the cms the operations there's like there's a couple of few hubs it, you know when you start using the bells and whistles of it that's where the price starts to to come into play excellent and Lizzie, I won't ask you exactly how much you're budgeting for HubSpot moving forward, but clearly you're seeing return on investment and you're considering adding additional hubs on onto what you use at the moment. Yeah, so we use um, professional for marketing. We've just up to enterprise for sales. Um, I think probably on the costing, one tip would be is just keep an eye on the number of marketing contacts you have. We, we also, um, so my, my colleague, Harry McComb, he's our business growth exec. He's like our HubSpot super user. So he's amazing. And he's sort of, you know, fully trained up and he helps on board the rest of the team, et cetera. But another thing that, that's sort of quite key is to sort of, is to make sure that your marketing contacts are clean and they're, they're not clean because they are, but they're, they're still relevant, you know, and, and you're moving people out of your marketing contacts if you don't need them anymore to, to make room for sort of, new new contacts and then to keep an eye on you know where you're at i think is at five thousand you have to up again and then that's actually quite a significant investment and then the other significant investment is adding sales seats to your you know to your sales side of, of, of hubspot so that's i think two things you need to to watch in terms of cost and perhaps you know you diarize it and make sure that you're regularly looking at where you're at, at with it all so that you just don't kind of slip over and end up having to you know, pay quite a significant amount extra than, you know, that you might not have budgeted for. Um, but you can, you know, you can, we, you know, you've got, you can have sort of a rough idea of where you might, might go with your contacts so that you can, you know, add to some contingency there at the beginning of the year. Excellent. And, and, and Jeff, um, same sort of question to you, you know, you, you are developing HubSpot at the moment. You're, you're quite a complex and a larger organization than the one Liz, Liz is from how do you justify those costs well the first thing was at looking at all the individual costs we were we were paying before we were on HubSpot um so I mean at, at just at the end of the at the end of the day we are paying roughly 30 percent less when I add everything together for so much more that's incredible uh, I mean really what we were paying for before was a uh you know the, the sales tool from Salesforce plus a little bit to MailChimp, plus a little bit to, you know, other, other things. And now essentially we have a marketing tool that has everything else into it. So um, that's, that's the best thing, you know, overall to say, but I think one thing we didn't touch on and Lizzie mentioned was really just the different levels they have at HubSpot. So they've got the professional and their enterprise versions. And I have to go back. I can remember what we have. I know we have marketing and sales enterprise, and I think the rest we have professional and there's different reasons you might pick each one. Um, but, and then also, yes, it's per seat. So we had to make sure we line up, the uh, uh, like with sales hub enterprise, it's a minimum of 10 seats. Um, and we really needed enterprise. So we, we went with the 10 seats there, uh, support. I think when you're in professional, you can go with fewer seats. So it's balancing all that stuff around. Um, and there's, of course, we have all five hubs, but there's plenty of add-ons too. Like, I know they, they offer transactional emails. Um, there's a higher version of CMS hub where you can, um, do more as far as um, like login type sites. So we're constantly looking at other stuff we can do to, to pay HubSpot more. 
so if budgets are tight hubspot's quite a flexible um option to take a look at in terms of what you can turn on and off james is that true yes and no i mean you you're, you're contracted to a degree so downgrading is, is i mean it's not an option no it's not necessarily needed the option i think jeff hit the nail on the head there that actually sell uh, hubspot is a cost saver whether that's time or money so it really depends upon what you're looking to achieve um it's always been designed to enhance the way you operate. You know, it's scaling businesses. It's it's one of its sort of selling points. If you want to scale, HubSpot's your tool. So you, you're kind of, you're going to save something. I know that. And I can't guarantee that. Like you can't They're guarantee all going to be coming back to you, James. No, but you, <laughs> you know, it's, you, it's pretty clear what the, the pricing is. I think it's quite fair compared to other products out there. Um, you know, some products pay you by, charge by user and contacts. Whereas HubSpot, you know, you pay per seat, but that's to give you all of the sales bells and whistles. You've got so much that it can enhance the sale cycle, then it is a no brainer because it saves time and that you can't get back. Um, so that would be, yeah, don't worry about the cost. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> and Claire, when you went to your management team and said HubSpot's the one we want to go for, how did you sell it to them when they talked about, you know, what well, how much is it going to cost? Well, they didn't just sign on the dotted line, obviously, because it's a growing business. I love this answer because this is insights to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to go through a process of, uh, you know, presenting where we are now where we're going to be in the future, all of the functionality changes, um, how it's going to streamline process, how it's going to give us, you know, afford us more time, give us, give a better customer experience. And yeah, I had to, I had to really um, help them understand, you know, as, as non-marketers, how this is going to revolutionize what we do. Um, and I would say, and I think this is quite important, coming from, you know, a growing business, I've, I've worked in really, really large organisations that if you are thinking about changing your, your um, CRM system, don't shy away from the big players in the market because, you know, as I say, we're a growing business. My um, CFO didn't fall off of his chair when I gave him the costs. Um, he can, you know, I've kept, it, I've kept everyone in the loop of, um, you know, how we're going with the project and how it's going to revolutionize um, marketing and everyone's comfortable with it. So just, you know, I think just don't, don't lean, like lean in to, to some of the big guys because they really can help your business, especially if you are scaling. Excellent. Um, we will take questions if anybody posts them at the end, but um, I just want to talk about the future. Lizzie, looking at the next 12 to 18 months, um, what, where are you going next with HubSpot? What, what are you going to be doing? Um, I think, so, as, as we grow, we'll probably bring more people into it. Playbooks is something we're going to look at. Maybe that's going to be useful. Um, otherwise, I think we'll continue to do what we're doing, but just better, you know, and, and, and perhaps, you know, look at the reporting side of things more. As I said, you know, as we've been using it for a certain period of time, as we're starting to see full sales cycles from lead gen to close to onboarding, that will give us more data, which we'll want to then look at, you know, use that for our marketing research, customer um, need, that, that sort of thing. So build it out as a, as a, you know, look at the intelligence we can get from it, as opposed to just the tactical stuff, take it to that level of, of um, usage, I'd say. Um, and then different, you know, different features will be, we're always looking out for the, the features that are going to help us uh, achieve what it is we want to do, um, you know, and do it, do it better, really. So, and we're always updating it. And we might look at using it for, 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 you know, not just integrating with WordPress, but perhaps using the full CMS capability, but that's TBC, yeah. Excellent. And, and Jeff, how about you? Uh, I mean, I alluded to uh, earlier that we were really going to look kind of getting a, a building out the customer journey, which they added a new customer journey mapping tool recently. Uh, and also playbooks is something that I see in the tabs. I just, we don't touch that either. So that's a, probably a great tip from James also to look into those. Um, and really just one of the one of the key things too is that HubSpot is always adding new features. Um, I've, I've 
basically added myself to their weekly list. So I'll get an email just to learn what the new features are. And I've seen, you know, every couple of weeks or something that comes along, that's pretty good. So that's a, that's a tip too, just to make sure you know what's, what's coming down there. So you can add those onto yours, but really it's just embracing the customer journey, um, getting more workflows in place. Um, you know, one thing that I guess we're all talking, you know, all the great, um, how rosy HubSpot is, but there's, you know, one of the things that we've noticed as we're getting further along, as we're getting more customized as the reporting is a little bit lacking in what we are looking for. And so uh, we've spent a lot of time trying to work on those customizations, seeing if there's outside tools we need to bring in there just to be able to create those kinds of reports. And again, I come from an, an analytics background. And so um, I guess I'm looking at things more in that lens and, and see some shortcomings there. And so I do continue to use Google Analytics a little bit. I do refer back to my Google Data Studios report at times just because it's a little more comprehensive. And so see how we can make that work more directly within the HubSpot piece is something I'll be looking into as well. Yeah, that's interesting. And obviously, as as marketers roles move forward and and change, then the requirements will be different, won't they? So um, that's really good, really good tip. Thanks, Jeff. And Claire, I'm guessing from you, it's just about getting started. Yeah, we've got a really exciting year coming up, I think. Um, when we're going to take it slow, make it work keep optimizing and yeah just just get going with it it's, it's going to be great right can't wait to hear how that journey goes <laughs> James are you able to give us any insight to what enhancements we may be seeing over the next 12 months with HubSpot I can, I can give you I can yeah I can, I can give you where they're heading with with their software uh, but just quickly before I do that I just want to quickly jump in on Jeff's comment about data um Supermetrics have really done have recently done a bit of a, a webinar with HubSpot about pulling data out, and it's a great way of getting that data into your data studio just to, to add and also have a look at data box. So the enhancements of reporting is going to get better, but it's about creating more custom objects, properties, you know, and, and this leads me actually into my next point uh, and answering your question that uh HubSpot are on a mission to kind of create a better connected journey, a better connected customer. So looking at how people behave and capturing information that is going to aid their journey is, is key. And I think with the last year or so is all have been about privacy. You know, Apple's been fighting with Meta or formerly known as Facebook about getting data insights without permission. And I think what really has come about that is owning more of the, the information you have with customers at their permission level, but making sure that you're continue delivering value. Um, otherwise, you know, let them unsubscribe. Uh, keep your costs down as well if you're trying to kind of keep keep your marketing um, contacts clean. But I think it's really from our perspective, what we're looking to try and do more on is is I kind of touched on it, and that's the the revenue operations. You know, it is as purse strings may be starting to tighten because of the world economy. I think the you're going to have to work harder to kind of prove yourself. I think this next year coming, I don't think we're going to have a bad year in that respect. I think it's just be harder to win it. So it's just focusing on the revenue and the revalue that you give across the whole cycle. Um, you know, customers, leads, people that you know, partners, um, but that I, there's no point giving you a feature update because it will become old next time someone sees it as jeff said there's releases every week but that's where they're heading with it excellent excellent news and um, we, we are running out of time and as we haven't had any questions through um i would quite like to end um today by just asking each of you for your your top tip when it comes to using hubspot so lizzie as, as you're first on my screen we'll come to you so um, I think really it's fantastic if you can designate a super user. So somebody who kind of is really, you know, hands on and is focused on, on HubSpot as a, as a, as one of, you know, the key tactics and is able, you know, to be the go-to person for inquiries and can feed that as filtered through that through to the HubSpot team. I think that's quite a good way of, of keeping things, um, quite efficient and, uh, yeah, and, um organized hub, hubspot evangelists yes. nice like that jeff how about you 
Uh, actually, I sort of build onto that is since we're on all those different hubs is we've really gotten evangelists for the different pieces too. We have one person on my team who really is the super user, uh, not me necessarily, uh, but then we have really the, the advocate for the sales hub piece, the advocate for the service hub, um, and then we've got the marketing team tying it all together. So I think that's it. Buy in, just don't lose sight of it. Um, you know, make sure, and again, we're just make sure over time, looking at what else there is to do because there's so much you can do you know i used to use the the metaphor about using only a portion of our brains i think we're you know, the same spot with hubspot as well excellent thank you and claire so um obviously yet to kind of use it in this current business but i think just well Keep upskilling yourself with the system is what I can and, and don't just wait for, you know, don't spend hours trying to tinker around um, and make your own way. Someone has done it. HubSpot provides you the information. Self-serve. It's the best thing you're going to do. You'll shave hours off of your off of your day. Thank you. And James, final word to you. Yeah, off, off the back of those. Uh, that's, I mean, I'll echo everything that they've said, to be honest, but I think one big thing is is slowly, slowly catch a monkey with the program. Um, be very clear on your sales process and constantly look at the analytics that HubSpot provides and keep evolving the sales process. Um, because without that, you know, HubSpot is a doer. It's not necessarily always a thinker. So you, you need to feed it and learn from its from what comes out of it but you know other than what they've said evangelists of each each component of the hub is is key um and one last thing is just having clear service level agreements between marketing sales you know who's responsible for delivering what and hold hold them accountable um it surprisingly makes such a better environment rather than in a who's done what blame environment yes Definitely don't need that blame environment. Thank no. you, all of you, for your contributions today. Your insights were, were fantastic. And um, thank you for joining us. Um, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much, everybody. Happy holidays. Thanks. Thanks.